G'day legends, welcome back to Lime Tree MC. In today's episode, we're diving into the nether for the first time in search of soul sand. We're also going to be building this awesome zombie spawner farm. We have a bit of an XP problem at the moment, and this farm should help us gather the XP we need. First up though, we're going to need to head into the nether to find the soul sand for this bubble elevator. So let's head on back up to the surface and get started on the nether portal. I've set out a good spot for our nether portal, just on the other side of the house. First job will be to build the portal. Just here should do the trick. Alright, we've got our portal ready. Oh well, let's go. I wonder what sort of biome we'll get. Remember to hit that like button if you're excited to see what we find. Well, here we are in the nether for the first time. Our mission is to find some soul sand. We'll need it for the zombie spawner farm. I really can't believe we entered the nether in the soul sand valley. How lucky is that? I honestly didn't plan that at all. We'll need to watch out for gas. I can see one over there. So I want to stay out of his sight. Okay, well this is great. I might just grab some quick soul sand and maybe some quartz and gold before we head on back up to the spawner farm. It will be really handy to have this quartz on hand in case we want to build some observers. Well I think this should do for now, on to the next job. I'm going to take the time to break down this portal and move it up to the nether roof. That way I can create a safer nether hub. Especially seeing our nether spawn location is in a soul sand valley. Once established, I can use the nether hub for fast travelling around the world. Linking up things like the end portal room when we find it and other faraway locations. Speaking of the end portal, I'm going to have to start planning for the dragon fight. It won't be for a few episodes yet, but I'll need to start gathering the items I need. Next episode, I might pop back into the nether in search of a fortress. That way I can get the blaze rods I need for the eyes of Ender. It would also be good to get some nether wart so we can start to brew some potions. Looking forward to that, it's always a fun adventure raiding a nether fortress. The fortress raid should be a lot easier once I can fully enchant my diamond armor. Okay, that's the nether hub set up for now. It's time to light the portal again and get back to the overworld. That way we can start building our zombie spawner farm. Might be time to head on down the mine shaft down to the zombie spawner farm. I found this zombie spawner on one of my caving adventures. I quickly lit it up at the time so that we could use it later on for an XP farm. We'll have to start by clearing out some blocks around the spawner, so let's dive in. These zombie farms provide a small amount of loot, but what I'm really building this for is the rotten flesh. Nah, just kidding. Nah, we need the XP. I use these spawner farms as an early form of XP. I think everybody would prefer a skeleton farm, but when you can't find a skeleton farm, a zombie farm will have to do. Anyway, this farm is the standard 4x4x4 four by four by four around the spawner. It'll use the water to push the zombies into the soul sand elevator, where they'll drop 21 blocks to a one hit kill. As I clear out this room, I might tell you a story about my last diamond mining adventure. I was down in my mine shaft down near the bedrock layer the other day looking for diamonds. I was mining for what seemed like hours but was probably just 10 minutes or so. When I came across a large gravel patch, I always like to clear out the gravel patches, mainly as I like to use it for concrete. Suddenly, a glimmer caught my eye. There it was, a cluster of diamonds nestled within the cold hard deep sleep. Excitement surged through me as I carefully chipped away, revealing the precious gems. As I continued to clear out the gravel, to my excitement, I found another patch of diamonds. In this now small room held eight diamond ore blocks. It was an amazing haul for such a small space. It got me to thinking about how good gravel patches are for easily clearing out large areas when looking for diamonds. Does anyone else like to find gravel when diamond mining? Let me know in the comments if you have any other diamond mining tricks. It's time to start putting the water in place. We'll just use a water bucket in each corner to push the zombies to the center. We'll then use a water bubble elevator to push the zombies up to a 21 block drop. That's what we'll need the soul sand for that we got from the nether in an earlier part of the episode. I've built a few of these farms in the past, and every time I have issues remembering how to put the stone walls under the water, you need to place them right so that the zombies don't get stuck. Oh well, I normally work it out in the end. Once I finish building up the farm, I'll spend some time cleaning up the killing chamber by lining the walls with a nicer looking block. 
I might try and use some of the quartz we brought back from the nether, along with some spruce. Anything would look better than what's there now at the moment, really. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's another good reason to build a zombie spawner farm. We can now sell rotten flesh to our cleric villager. That way we can level him up, and he might give us the enderpearl trade. Building these bubble elevators can be a little bit tedious at times. I probably should have used scaffolding. It makes it much quicker and easier. I'm basically just mining up to make the bubble elevator, and then I'll mine back down the other side to form the drop into the kill chamber. If you've enjoyed the episode so far, I wonder if you could subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to release a new Let's Play episode every Friday. Would love to see you back in the next episode. These bubble elevators are pretty easy to make once you get the hang of them. The biggest thing to watch out for is trying not to drown in the water while planting the kelp. There's a few tricks to get around this though. One is to spam torches while you regain your breath. The other is to build the tube too wide and run ladders up one side. That way it makes it so that you can catch your breath at any time. I made a bit of a mistake while building this farm. I thought I had lit everything up well. But as I came to find out, when I mined up to make the water drop, I had not lit up a cave at the top. A very sneaky creeper snuck up on me and gave me a very big fright. Lucky I had on my diamond armour. It saved me from certain doom. It's funny how a creeper will always sneak up on you from behind. He really jumped on top of me there too. That really gave me a fright, I can tell you. Worst part about that creeper blowing up was I didn't get any gunpowder. I'll have to build a creeper farm or a mob farm pretty soon, as we'll need gunpowder for making rockets. Not sure which one to build just yet. Let me know in the comments what you think. Should I build a creeper farm or a mob farm? Anyway, this mob drop should sort out these zombies. It should bring them down nicely to a one-hit kill. I thought that was a slime I could hear. There must be a slime chunk around here somewhere. He's a big fella too. I can always use more slime blocks. We'll get quite a few too out of this with looting three on this sword. I'll just finish taking care of this slime and then I'll get back into finishing the build. Okay, now it's time to plant the kelp to turn the water into source blocks. I'm just going to plant the kelp all the way to the top. I could use bone meal, but I'm a bit short on bone meal at the moment. This is the last thing to do before closing up the farm and setting the zombies loose. I'm excited. I love it when a farm starts working. It makes the hard work of building these things in survival all worth it. It will be really good to have a good source of XP. I need to put some enchantments on my armor before we go to the nether fortress. I normally like to put protection 4 on my armor, well that and feather falling 4. I don't think I'd ever take on the dragon without feather falling 4. Well that's pretty much got all the water mechanics sorted for this farm. I'll just tidy up the remaining few pieces to do and we'll get ready to close the farm up and get it started. All that's left to do now is to break the torch that's stopping the spawns and close these two blocks in. Once I do that, the farm will start working. We'll just have to wait until the kill chamber fills up a bit. I like to wait and get a number of zombies with one swipe. Then we can sit back and collect all that XP. Well, the farm seems to work really well. I didn't need to make any adjustments in the end. It all just worked for the first time. It is a pretty simple design though. All I need to do is just stand here and wait for the kill chamber to fill up. Once the kill chamber's filled up, I just whack them. As you can see, I've tidied up a bit down here. I've put a gate in so that the mobs can't sneak up on me, and I've put a door in as well. I've also lined the walls down here with some quartz, spruce, and oak planks. I think it's looking a bit better down here, don't you think? I've also put some tinted glass blocks in so that we can see the zombies spawn. I think it makes it a little bit more interesting when you have to stand here for long periods of time. I'll probably have to put an anvil in down here sometime so that I can put some enchantments on some armor and stuff. It might be a good idea to place a few more chests down here for some storage. Other than that, I think the area is mostly finished off for now. Alright, our zombie spawner farm's up and running. We're getting some pretty good XP. It's enough to heal up my tools so we can build some more projects. 
We have some more fun adventures coming up, so we'll need all the XP that we can get. I hope you enjoyed this episode of our Minecraft Let's Play series. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more adventures with Lime Tree MC. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode. See yous!